Hi, I'm George, and this is Photoshop Elements, five different ways to change backgrounds. And let's switch over here to our beginning picture right here. And the first thing we need to do is to separate out the foreground from the background. And for that, I'm going to first make a background copy here, duplicate layer, and then we're here on our copy. And let's just make a real fast selection around this. I'll do this really quickly, but you know, for a good finished picture, take a little bit more time than I'm doing here and make sure you do a really good job on this. But it's really pretty easy. Just make a selection right around your figure like that. And we've got both sides here. Now I'm using the lasso tool, which is usually pretty easy to use. And don't go into the picture, don't go into the portrait, just a little ways outside. And then come down here, put the feathering at one pixel, make it just a little bit softer. Refine edge, here we go. And in refine edge, I normally use the overlay option. That's this kind of a pinkish red coloration in here. I'll leave everything else at the defaults for this. And then take this tool, and just paint right along that edge and then come in a little bit further and then work right over there. I always start out a little ways and then I come in for the finish and that does a pretty good job that way. And just work your way around the whole figure doing this technique. As you can see with the refined edge, it actually goes very quickly. Now this depends upon having a good separation between background and foreground already. So the closer your background is to your foreground image, the more difficult it's going to be to do your selection. But just take your time, you should be able to get a good selection. Okay, let's work right around this side. Now when you get into some hair like this, again, work from the outside and then work in, that will give you the best results. And we'll finish up this side. Again, same technique here, starting out and then going in. Work our way down this side. And we'll finish up on the right side of the hair here. There we go, last little bit, right there. Okay, looks good. Okay, now down here, let's output this to a new layer with layer mask, choose okay. There's a new layer, there's a layer mask, it hides this layer, we just have that one just as a safety. Our first technique, we'll use that saved background layer right here, and right there it says graphics, click on that. This brings up the backgrounds. Whenever you use one of these, it automatically changes the background to this new background. So I'll click on this one right here, that changes the background. There you go, looks real nice. If we go back to layers, you'll see how the background has now been changed to that background. It's one of the reasons why I made a duplicate of our background layer. Okay, that's version number one, using those built-in backgrounds. The next we use a pattern fill, and let's hide this background, and I'll go right here and make a new layer, and we'll put our pattern fill right in here. Now for the pattern fill, come down to the bucket tool right there, and then we have two options. Here's your standard paint option, and then to the right is the pattern option, and in here, there are all kinds of different patterns in here. Artistic surfaces, colored paper in here. Here's our default options. Lots and lots of different patterns that you can use. Some of these work better than others. You'll just have to try them out to see what looks good. And you can see here, just scroll down, you'll see a lot of those different patterns in here. Let's just try our regular patterns. I'll use this basket weave right there. Click on the pattern and then click inside the transparent area. It just fills that layer with that pattern. And there we go. So that's our second technique, and that's using the paint bucket with a pattern fill. Okay, we'll hide that layer. And for this next technique, I wanna make a copy of our background right here. This is our saved background. Right click, duplicate layer, choose okay. Now in this technique, we'll be changing the actual look of this layer here by using one of our different filters. Go up here to filter, come down to filter gallery right there. In here, there are lots of different possibilities. Here's a colored pencil look. Here's a cutout look. Now keep in mind, even though you're seeing the face change on this, this is just changing that one background layer. So we're really just gonna be seeing this stuff out here and the face and the portrait here will be replaced by the clean copy that we already have made. So lots of different options in here, different ways you can change that background depending upon what you want. We'll just go for a nice clean one down here and that's under texture and the texturizer. In here, one of the options is brick, and I set the scaling clear to the top, 200%. You can adjust the relief. I think seven or eight is pretty nice. We can go real hard if you want to there, or real soft. We'll just leave that at seven. You can type it in if you want to. You can change your light angle in here. Upper left seems to work out well. Choose okay. And again, that changes that background copy here with that brick look, and we have our foreground clean portrait. Okay, that was version number three. Let's now do another version here, and this is going to be adding in a new fill layer. Go up here to layer, come down to new fill layer. You have a couple options in here, solid color, gradient. We've already done a pattern, so we won't bother with that one. Solid color is pretty easy, just click on that and choose okay, and it just fills that with a solid color. If you click in the middle here and drag upper left hand corner, that's how you make a solid white background. It's that easy to do. Let's say you wanted to have a gradient in here instead, we'll do one of those as well. Layer, come down to new fill layer and gradient. Same thing, choose okay. And you can then choose your gradient right here. 
click on the actual gradient and you can then choose different gradients right from the gradient editor. And there are lots and lots of options in here depending upon the look that you want. There we go, so that's a gradient background. Okay, so both of those are the same basic concept and that's adding in a new fill layer using the layer new fill layer option. Okay. Our last one, version 5 here, is the standard one of bringing in a photograph. I'll just hide all of this stuff right now. And for that, we'll go up here, we'll grab a photo. I just have this one open up. Lots of ways of bringing this into the picture. You can use the File Place command, File and Place right here, and bring it in that way. Or if you have it already open, you can then drag this down and use a floating window. If you don't have floating windows working, go up here to the Edit menu, come down to Preferences and General, and right there, check that box right there, Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. You can now float your windows. The nice thing about this is you can just take your background, drag it over here, and it puts it into your picture. Now the images are different sizes, so I need to resize this image a little bit. I'll just put it right here. I'll grab the corner. I'll drag it out until it's big enough. There we are. And then I'll just find a nice spot here with some clouds. And that looks pretty good right in there. And choose OK. And there we go. There's using a photograph for the new background. So there it is. Five different ways of making new backgrounds for your photo here inside of Photoshop Elements. All right. And I'll see you next time.